going back to the fact check article, they're saying the post references comments from physician Kate Shanahan. Sure. Um, I think that Kate's work is great and probably based on science. They say some posts have linked seed oils to an array of diseases and ailments, including cancer, diabetes, asthma, and arthritis. I think that these are linked. <laughs> seed oils are definitely linked to these diseases. Uh, that is a term that is used very often in medical science. Linked means associated. And while it is true, you can find many uh, studies that link the consumption of seed oils to these things and the temporal association of increased seed oil consumption with a significant rise in obesity, asthma, diabetes, chronic illness is real. So um, it's it's not, you can't really argue that seed oils appear to be linked to these things. Other posts recommend replacing seed oils with animal fats or other plant oils. Well, that's absolutely true. And I think that that's totally reasonable. This AFP fact check article seems to be uh, saying in, seems to be insinuating in some way that replacing seed oils with animal fats could never be good for humans. In fact, that's the position I would take in in total, that it's much better to replace seed oils with animal fats, which are much lower in linoleic acid. So here we're starting to get interesting. Medical experts say all fats are high in calories, should be consumed in moderation, but claims that vegetable and seed oils are harmful are misleading. I'm not sure how these posts are misleading. <laughs> and I will corroborate that statement in a moment. So um, let's just talk about some pretty significant evidence that I've seen that seed oils are harmful for humans. And again, the framework of this whole conversation is the concern that just because the people who wrote this fact check article decided to talk to Darius Mazafarian, and he says that seed oils are beneficial for humans and these claims are misleading, they are. And we don't get to have any discussion about it. Instagram will censor the post, stop promoting it. And we don't have any ability to have discussions about contentious or interesting topics on Instagram. So seed oils, harmful. Let's talk about that. For those of you listening, I will issue a slight warning. We're about to get kind of technical. I'm going to show a bunch of articles. But this is my assertion that there is plenty of evidence that Seed oils are going to increase your risk of cardiovascular disease as the post kind of poo-pooed in the beginning of this AFP fact check post. And I will show you many of those articles now. So let's start with this study first. The title is Effects of an Oleate Rich and Linoleate Rich Diet on the Susceptibility of Low-Density Lipoprotein to Oxidative Modification in Mildly Hypercholesterolemic Subjects. Basically, they're saying we're either going to feed people olive oil or oils that are high in oleic acid, or we're going to feed them seed oils high in linoleic acid and see how fragile their LDL is. See how susceptible to oxidation their LDL particle is. It is pretty well established within cardiovascular medicine, Western medicine in general, that if your LDL is oxidized, that is a major risk factor, perhaps causative of atherosclerosis in the atherosclerotic process, as I will show in this podcast. Uh, macrophages don't take up native LDL. They only ingest oxidized LDL in the subendothelial space. So having oxidized LDL is bad. Having LDL that is more likely to be oxidized is really bad. And imagine this. So this was an eight-week diet. And what they found is noted here that LDL oxidation is altered by adding polyunsaturated fats. Substitution of monounsaturated rather than polyunsaturated fats for saturated fats in the diet might be preferable for the prevention of atherosclerosis, meaning that as you see here, LDL isolated from subjects on the oleic acid diet was less susceptible to copper-mediated oxidation as measured by conjugated dienes and lipid peroxidation formation and less susceptible to LDL protein modification as evidenced by reduced LDL macrophage degradation after copper or endothelial cell oxidation. So when you give people more polyunsaturated fats, their LDL is more likely to be oxidized both in vitro and in vivo models and there are so many studies which continue to show the same thing. I'll keep showing you these. How about another one? Changes in dietary fat intake alter plasma levels of oxidized LDL and LP little a. LP little a is a very known strong risk factor for cardiovascular disease. In this study, 37 healthy women fed two diets. The saturated fat intake was decreased from 28 grams to 20 grams. And the amount of polyunsaturated fat was increased from 11 grams to 13 or 19 grams. And what did they find? <laughs> The amount of oxidized LDL in the plasma went up when you do that. When you have less saturated fat and more polyunsaturated fats, the oxidized LDL goes up. So the median plasma oxidized LDL increased by 
in response to the low fat, low vegetable diet and 19% in response to the low fat, high vegetable diet. Also the LP little a concentration was increased by 7% and 9% respectively. They're saying the low fat diet in respect to lower saturated fat. But as you see here, they are increasing the polyunsaturated fat. So solid evidence that increasing polyunsaturated fat, lowering saturated fat causes more oxidized LDL. Yet another one, dietary intakes of polyunsaturated fatty acids and indices of oxidative stress in human volunteers. This is a four-week study, 10 healthy non-smoking male volunteers. Study indicates that although dietary levels of polyunsaturated fatty acids may favorably alter cholesterol profiles, meaning that we know that polyunsaturated fats lower cholesterol, which isn't a good thing, hold please for the Minnesota coronary study, as I'll talk about later in the study, the same dietary changes may adversely affect some indices of lipid peroxidation. <laughs> Care should be taken when providing dietary advice on PUFA intake and adequate intake of antioxidants to match any increased PUFA may be important for preventing oxidative stress. Tell me again, fact checkers, about how polyunsaturated fatty acids are healthy for humans. <laughs> Let's keep going. Impact of eight-week linoleic acid intake in soy oil on LPPLA2 activity in healthy adults. LPPLA2 is lipoprotein phospholipase A2, generally regarded as an indicator of endothelial inflammation, in quotation marks, endothelial damage, endothelial remodeling. When you see something raise LPPLA2, it's not a good thing. And can you guess what happened in this study? An increase in plasma linoleic acid following intake of soybean oil, independently associated with LPPLA2 activity, which was also related to ApoB, OxLDL, and CEPICT, which is collagen epinephrine closure time, an indicator of endothelial function. So yet another study says that soybean oil, just given to people, not in processed foods, soybean oil given to people, as the uh, authors of the AFP fact check and experts would say, that's healthy, increases the um, CEPICT, which is a indicator of endothelial function, meaning it's getting worse. You're getting more oxidized LDL and you're getting an increase in LPPLA2, which cannot possibly be a good thing. But wait, there's more. The effects of diets rich in monounsaturated fatty acids on plasma lipoproteins, the Jerusalem Nutrition Study, high MUFAs, monounsaturated fatty acids, versus high PUFAs, polyunsaturated fatty acids. It's 26 uh, students randomly assigned to a 24-week crossover study. Again, all of the studies I have shown you are randomized, controlled study. There was a significantly higher tendency toward lipid peroxidation on the PUFA diet, as ascertained by more thiobarbituric acid reactive substances formations on the diet. Dietary PUFA results in somewhat lower total cholesterol and LDLC. No surprise there. We've seen that many times. Whereas with the monounsaturated fat, susceptibility of LDL to oxidative stress is lower. So... Again, let's recall the whole point of that little excursion. Experts say that seed oils, not in processed foods, are healthy. And at the beginning of the AFP fact check article, which I can bring back up, they poo poo the notion that seed oils are connected with heart disease. In case you forgot about that, consider this again right here. Blog and social media posts claim many vegetable oils, such as those from sunflower and canola, can promote inflammation that leads to heart disease and other ailments. Uh, yeah, I would say that oxidized LDL, LP little a, thiobarbituric acid or T-bar substances, CEPICT, all of those are in some ways inflammatory and promote heart disease. So yeah, 